The, the Old Testament reading this morning remind, reminded me of a cartoon I've recently seen. Um, it's a picture in heaven of God with um, Steve Jobs and Moses walking up. Moses has the tablets underneath his arms and God says, Moses, this is Steve. He's going to upgrade your tablets. <laughs> There's a lot going on this morning in our reading in the gospel. There's, there's the story of, of Jesus being transfigured. We call this Transfiguration Sunday. However, in Luke's gospel, Luke's is the only one that talks about the transfiguration. He doesn't actually use the word transfigured. Mark uses transfigured. Matthew uses transfigured. Transfigured means that you change, right? Jesus changed. Luke talks about how Jesus was praying and his face started to change appearance. He started to shine, kind of like Moses did. When Moses met with God on the mountain, his face shined. How many of you have ever seen somebody with a shiny face? Normally they have too much oil and they've got to use some kind of product to keep the oil down. But So Jesus' appearance changed. And it's almost like we have two separate readings this morning. I, you know, part of me wanted to take off the end part there and not read it, right? We get Jesus going up on the mountain eight days later. A lot of stuff happening here. With Peter, James, and John, he starts to pray. His appearance has changed. He's there talking to two people. This cloud comes down, tells Peter to shut up and listen to Jesus. And then we get this story of them going down off the mountain and meeting with someone whose child, only child has a demon and the disciples can't get rid of it. It seems like two separate, completely different stories. How do they go together? Why do they go together? But it all makes sense, really, when you think about it from the standpoint of what the mountaintop is supposed to be and what worship is supposed to be. How many of you see worship as a time that you can come? I'm going to ask some hard questions this morning. But it's okay. We're in church, so everything's good. How many of you see worship as a time for you to come and get away from everything that life is throwing at you? I see a few hands, a few brave people. It's okay. Honestly, I won't remember. It's okay. It's all good. How many of you see worship as a time for you to come and get recharged for what you need to do during the week? How many of you come here because your mom and dad made you? (laughs) And that wasn't just kids, if you didn't notice. There was quite a few adults that went like this too, so... Right? We all come to worship for different reasons. And we all do do different things for different reasons. Jesus today took Peter, James, and John up on the mountaintop eight days later. Why eight days later? What happened just before this? Does anybody know? Luke chapter 9. What happened just before this in Luke chapter 9? Anyone? Anyone? I would give bonus points to a confirmation kid if they could tell me what happened. Without looking. (laughs) No Googling real quick. What happened right before this is Jesus was with the disciples and they were in Caesarea Philippi. And what does anyone know what happened in Caesarea Philippi when Jesus was with his disciples? Jesus was there praying and Jesus asked his... Jesus prays a lot. If you haven't noticed that, Jesus prays a lot in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus was praying and he looked at the disciples and he says, who do the people say that I am? And they said, some say Elijah, some say Elijah, one, some, some Isaiah, some say the, one of the prophets. And Jesus said, and who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Right? And eight days after that, why eight days? You read the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark. They both say six days after these things took place. So six days, bless you, after after Jesus was with the disciples in Caesarea Philippi, according to Matthew and Mark, six days later, Jesus took James, Peter, and John up to the mountain and was transfigured. In Luke, though, it says eight days. Why eight days? What's the significance of eight days? How many days does a week have? So eighth day, if, if, if Sunday is the first day of the week, the eighth day is what? Sunday. There's your reason why it's eight days. Because in the early Christian church, the eighth day became to be known as the day that we gathered together to worship. So Jesus took Peter, James, and John up the mountain to worship. Not to pray, to worship. 
to be with God and to do the things that God has called us to do. How many of you have ever been on the mountaintop? And I don't literally mean the mountaintop. I mean that ethereal experience that Christians talk about where you go and you meet with God and you've had this wonderful experience with God and you don't want to leave. How many of you have ever done that? I, I read some, some things this past week that talk about how people should stop talking about their mountaintop experiences. I don't want you to stop talking about your mountaintop experiences. But it's the same thing that Peter wanted to do this morning, right? Peter's there with Jesus. He sees the other two people, which I've always wanted to know. How does Peter know who they are? Right? Jesus obviously knows who Moses and Elijah are because Jesus helped to form Moses and Elijah and was there at the beginning and helped them do everything. But how in the world did Peter know who they are? Were they wearing name tags? Hello, my name is Moses. Hello, my name is Elijah. But Peter wanted to freeze this moment in time. He wanted to build tents to stay up there forever, right? And that's what we do when we share these moments, these ethereal moments of being with God on the mountaintop. We froze that moment in time. And you know what? I don't think that's necessarily bad. Because I can point to you, I can point out to you several times in my past, in my history, where I've had mountaintop experiences. And several of them led me to be what I am today. So if I didn't have those experiences, I would not be your pastor. I would not be standing in front of you right now talking to you. So those experiences are good. They form us into who we are today. But that's the point of our lessons and the stories this morning and why they absolutely go together. Worship is a time to come together to be with God and to hear what God has to say to us. To knock everything out, to have the cloud come down and tell us to forget about everything that we think is important and listen to what God has to tell us. Right? That's what God did when the cloud came down. It doesn't say that in our text, but basically what he said to Peter was, shut up and listen to what this guy has to tell you because he knows what's going on in your life better than you do. And then Jesus took them down off the mountain. Why? Because when we have that experience with God, you can't stay there. That's not what God made you for. God made you to go out those doors, to be in the world, to be the, the hands and feet of his love and his mercy to everyone that needs to hear it. That's why we can't stay on the mountain. That's why we gather on Sunday mornings is to be filled with his love gathered together in his name, fed in his, at his table to be sent out into the world to give his love to everybody. We can't stay on the mountaintop, even though we want to. Because as Moses had to come down and Jesus and the disciples had to come down, and that's what all of us are here for. As Paul said to the Corinthians, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to, to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. We're sent down from the mountain out into the world. And as you go out today, look at the signs. Right? How many of you know what the signs say above the door? <laughs> If you haven't, yeah, it says service entrance. What goes through service entrances? Servants. That's what we all are. We're all called and claimed, named by God, gathered into this place to learn who we are and to equip ourselves in our identity, to gather together with the body of Christ, to build ourselves up and to give us strength in knowing that we're not alone in this battle. We're not alone in this ministry, but all of us go together out those doors into a world that so desperately needs to hear the love and grace and mercy that you already know about. So take that to the world and let them hear about God's love. Help them to go to the mountain, but remind them that they can't stay there, even though we want to. Because God's called each and every one of us to go out into the world to share his love, his mercy and his grace. So go, servants of God, named and claimed by him, sent to be his hands and feet.